Hello, people. Welcome to Poor Choice. If you're watching for the first time, I'm glad you're here. If you are a return viewer, thanks for coming back. Now, as you can see, the name of the show is still Poor Choice. I had a lot of suggestions for a new name, not only here, but on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. My neighbor even offered some suggestions. He was shouting them through the wall. Uh, and after I looked up the translations, I realized he really wasn't asking me anything about the show. Now, on a previous episode, what happened is I offered a gift to a person who come up with a better and new name for Poor Choice. Nobody won that award. But I'm still going to give out the gift for the best try. So, congratulations to Bob. Bob, whose last name I will not give you. Bob, coincidentally, is a bartender, and he has served me a lot of the drinks that you will see on this show. Now, I appreciate all of you that are watching and subscribing, and there's more of you every week. And with more people watching, you're going to get more of those lingo people that try to sound like they're actually in on it. They ask you questions like, who's your audience? If I thought that far ahead, I wouldn't be drinking 90-proof drain cleaner every week, now would I? My audience? This is the kind of buzzword nonsense you use to create the illusion that your job is somehow more important than fetching oat milk lattes for a guy that wears a Bluetooth in his ear all day. My audience, I will tell you who my audience is. It all depends on how you pronounce this word. Now, there are three ways to say this word. Bologna. That's the way most people say it. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Bologna people are my audience. There's a second way, baloney. Almost the same as baloney people, but in a little more of a hurry. You're full of baloney. The last time I had a baloney sandwich, I was seven. Everybody still knows what you're talking about, and baloney people are my audience too. The third way, bologna. You pronounce the first O as an O, not an A, like they went to lunch meat grad school. Nobody knows what you're talking about. If you pronounce it this way, fuck off. This show is not for you. Go watch a video of somebody telling you a $300 bottle of single malt scotch is like getting laid on silk sheets. It's supposed to. Because if you're paying $300 for a bottle of scotch, you're getting fucked. This show is not about high-end booze. It's about what it's like to drink a shitty bologna sandwich. Cinnamon whiskey is what I like to call a gateway drink. It's something that you start out on, as long as you progress into something stronger by the time you begin driving a car. Cinnamon is a spice that's used in a lot of things to smooth things out, to ease the rough spots. Like the time your mom made you cinnamon toast when you were a kid and then told you your parents were about to get a divorce. Now, I've had plenty of cinnamon whiskey shots, and I do not like them, because I always have to explain to the people I'm drinking the cinnamon whiskey shots with what a VHS tape is. Let's go. I'm not happy about this. Drinking a Pop Tart you found in a meth lab. Ugh. Ugh. I could put a wick in my mouth now and I would keep all the mosquitoes away. I, I, I feel like I'm ready to get operated on by a frontier doctor. Now, what have we learned here today? Well, top shelf liquor is made from the best ingredients. Cinnamon whiskey is not top shelf liquor. You have to be careful with things made with ingredients named after strippers. Cinnamon, jasmine, ginger, colby, brie, roe, yeah, fish roe. 
Eggs and strippers just don't mix. This is John McClellan on Poor Choice, over and out.